Well, good morning, Solvig. It's morning. really nice to have you here. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name's Lindy. This is Solvig's on it, and she is our curate. So, Solvig, we met about two years ago, uh, or nearly, um, and we went out for coffee, sat by the sea. It was really lovely. Uh, so I know a little bit about you, but many people don't know quite as much and what with the pandemic and everything that's been going on it'd be really nice if you could help us out with a few questions is that okay absolutely brilliant so question number one what led you into ministry in the first place well the short answer is really a series of events and people prodding me in this direction for quite a few years sometimes very firmly and sometimes very gently um i think I didn't really want to be a priest. I don't know if I can say that. Yeah, um, I didn't really want to do this. I, I, as a young person, I just wanted an easy life. I wanted a nice, cushy job, nine to five, that I can leave behind when I leave the, the desk. Um, and I've tried many things over many, many years to try and avoid this. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I pushed it back and I, um, I resisted becoming a priest for very a very long time and then in the end really there was nothing else left you know I've tried so many things and there was just nothing that would make me feel as fulfilled and as happy as when I am um, in ministry and so um, in the end there was no choice left for me that was it uh, so the journey started maybe when I was in my teens I um, I became quite involved in the church. Um, actually, let me, take a few, let me take a few steps back. I, as a young child, I grew up in a family that doesn't, doesn't go to church. Um, but when I was six, I asked my parents if I could get baptised. Oh. I don't remember this personally, really. I was too young, but it came from me. And so I started going to church. They came with me for a bit, but then gave up. But I still went for most of my childhood and then my teenage years. And then I finished school and I went to study theology at university in Strasbourg, where I grew up in France. Okay. Um, and that was kind of the real first step I took towards uh, ministry, but I was still sort of not quite convinced. And I did loads of other stuff in the side, not really committing. Then I came to the UK um, in my early 20s and I did another theology degree down in Winchester, which was really fun. I uh, had a really good time doing this, um, but again, I didn't really quite commit to anything. I just had, I did many jobs, um, yeah. so I did this for quite a few years, uh, did various jobs here and there. Um, and then at some point, someone in Salisbury Diocese kind of took me by the hand and said, you've got to do this now, you, you know, you've got to get on with it. Uh, this is really something that you seem to be enjoying and, and good at. So, um, so they sent me for training in a college in Oxford for three years, where well, I did yet another theology degree. That's three. Um, that's three. Okay. <laughs> for someone who doesn't want to commit, that was a lot of uh, theology, yeah. Yeah. Um, and at the end of that training, I, uh, I was sent for a curacy down here in Swanage. Yay! So I arrived here about two years ago, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. So a bit dragged screaming and shouting yeah. at the beginning part of your life. Absolutely. But then coming into that obedience and saying to God yeah. well actually yeah I get it now yes and I've really enjoyed it you know there is uh, particularly the, the first year of my curacy before the pandemic it was it was such a blast I loved it it's been such fun times yeah. and everything about it was enjoyable and then the pandemic happened and in, in a strange way some of it was uh, I mean all of it was challenging and hard and horrible but I still felt such a privilege to be able to be there and do this with yeah. uh, the local community. And I found that extremely fulfilling, which uh, I didn't expect would happen. So, yeah, I don't regret taking that, uh, that step towards priesthood for sure. Great. And now you're with us for six weeks? Yeah. Which is fantastic. So having a little bit of a change um, yes. and being with us. So tell us a bit more about yourself. So what are you really passionate about in life? I am passionate about a lot of things, really. I think mostly in terms of my connecting my passion with my ministry is uh, really focused on social justice. I think I, um, I've always been quite passionate about uh, 
about justice, about equality, having a world where everyone is uh, recognized and accepted and affirmed in who they are. Um, and sadly, I think we live in the world where we are still facing a lot of racism, a lot of sexism, a lot of homophobia, a lot of classism, a lot of disabledism. There's, there's a lot of um, bad things happening in this world. And I really feel very strongly that we need to work together and create a, a, an egalitarian society. And I really think that this was one of the central focus of Jesus' ministry, really, a ministry of inclusion and, and equality, um, equality uh, starting with uh, the, this beautiful Magnificat that Mary sang while she was pregnant with Jesus, you know, this sort of prophecy, all these wonderful things he was going to do, which is such a cry for uh, a revolution, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I feel very strongly about this. And uh, my, uh, my master's thesis was about food, po food poverty in the UK and Anglican social theology, and I felt that this was quite a strong um, direction I wanted to go with my life, so, yeah. Wow, and I know that you've been involved with um, climate action. Yes, yes, yeah, I do feel very strongly about this too. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite daunting, really, I think, reading what's going on at the moment in the world and, and talking reading from experts in climate change who are telling us we have about 10 years really left yes. to, um, to make any kind of small difference in what's going on. Um, and it's, you know, it's already too late for quite a few people around the world that have had to leave where, they're, where they've um, grew up, where, where their business is, where their lives are because of climate change. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel that this is definitely a a thing that is at the centre of my ministry in terms of how I, I preach, how I, um, how I pray and how I work with people around the local community and also definitely challenging our local government um, and holding them accountable for uh, the repercussions of some decisions that's taken in government. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Um, last question, um, what are you hoping to get out of your time with us here at All Saints? Well, I, I'm not really looking for anything specific. I think I'm quite open to see where the spirit is going to take us. Brilliant. Um, she has very mysterious ways to work. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe I would love for it to be a two-way uh, experience where um, I'm learning and we're learning together and we're growing from this experience together. So Sounds it's not just... Me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this to just be me taking as much as I can from this. Um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, ministry is always like that. I think even as a priest, um, we're not just learning from things, we're teaching each other and it's definitely a communal experience. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I haven't asked that you are burning to tell us? Um, Nothing I can think of right now. I think I'm really excited. For me, it's a great change of scenery in some ways, although still in the same town. Um, my ministry so far in Swanage has been quite um, traditional, I guess, or middle of the road, Anglican. And um, I, I do love a bit more of a charismatic style of worship. So I'm very excited to be part of that and experience that and great. learn from this. Well, thank you very much, and I hope we get that next coffee down by the sea really soon. Me too. Thanks very much, Sylvie. Thank you.